Are you able to see my desktop? Yeah, yes, it's very clearly. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. First of all, thanks for, uh, for the invitation. Share my experience on the open source shuttle and one of the projects what I am sharing. So, about myself, uh, I have around 20 plus year experience on the VLS design. I have worked a lot on the most of the aspect of RTL to GDS flow from uh, architecture to uh, tape port. And also, I have a lot of experience on the post silicon debug and system framework. In my career, I worked for more, most of the more, more most of the commercial tape ports around 180 nanometer to all the way down to 10 nanometer. So I worked in a company uh, like uh, Cypress Semiconductor, Centilium, and currently I am working in Intel as a design manager at Intel India. So this let me start my presentation. I just thought I'll just give a brief background on what is this open MPW shuttle project what we are discussing. So this is the sponsored by a shuttle which is sponsored by Google and it is managed by an EFWS team and the tape outs are done in the sky water uh, foundry which is a 130 nanometer. And if you see the main points are there are 40 free shuttles are given per shuttles, free slots are available. And currently the way it is running, I see there are four shuttles are there per year. This is an approximation I am just saying. The main requirement is to keep the design complete in the open source. Uh, your design, you need to keep it in the open source. And uh, the cost of the fabrication, packaging and the file evaluation board and shipping it to everything is covered by Google. And in this, uh, when you are, you are for the chance, they are going to get a 50 parts, packaged parts and five development board, they get it. So if you see the, how the actual uh, design is uh, going to sit within the open shuttle, the Caravan, the EFWS team has created a uh, one harness where they created their own small uh, PSV core here. If the projects are without any risk core, you need an external way to configure it. You can use their risk, small risk is there, which we can use to configure it. And for a user angle, they given a 10 mm square free space. So whatever design you, you we, we develop, it is going to fit within that and the, your final integrated chip will be looking uh, like this. So it is a 38 pin package and uh, the pins are already frozen, but uh, you have a control that uh, they is given a subway, you can manage this IOS and you can control it. So this is how what uh, the MPW shuttle project. So about uh, my experience, uh, so I, actually I started an um, open source shuttle around December 2020 times. Uh, I think that time exactly the MPW1 which was also already announced on the 2020 December which I was not uh, attempted in any, any of the project on that one. So but I started for the MPW2 which was uh, around the June 2021 timeline the effort was planned. So since because of my sort of experience, I don't want to do a small project. I thought of taking a basic risk based SOC design. So I thought maybe that's what I should do as I must my first trial. So but when I started, it was like a, it was a tough ride for me. Actually, I thought it will be a smooth ride with my experience. I thought, but uh, when I started uh, run, using the tools, I see a lot of issues in the most mostly in the most of the issues, you can see the system were lock, limited system were lock support was there in the simulator and I were lock and synthesis. So whatever SOC design I picked, nearly I need to modify nearly 20 to 30 percent of the design to match, uh, compile the simulation design in say able to simulate within the same simulator and synthesis. So that was, it took my lot of my effort and I done a two and two to find out is it my design correctly working and simulator working and some of the places tool was compiling but uh, synthesizing but it is uh, totally optimizing the design because of some specific system where lots of syntaxes. So I can say so it was a tough way I to simulate it, cross check the simulator is not uh, totally optimizing the design and also since only there were limited complex SOC was there only MPW1 was taped out had very limited references to cross check to flow, flow ways. And also in the flow wise, I found it, uh, it was like a totally a lot of uh, 
a lot of instability was there in MPW two time. I see each matter to synthesize it. I was uh, it was uh, two was breaking one or the other place. You know, it may be synthesis or clock tree and power routing, global routing, one or the other places. Uh, tool are breaking. I need to place a bug report on the corresponding tools and uh, those reiterations. So, so it it was I can say it's a, it's a lot of effort uh, gone in my first first step in our experience way. And also one of the thing what I saw was the how the tool. The porting, the mechanism they managed. Uh, so the the concept what they done is first the, there is an independent uh, the um, open source community tools are managed independent. The YSC, Cyberla, uh, Magic tools are independently managed by the independent open source community. Those are picked by open source team and they are merging it and creating a open lane uh, tools. So one of the main issue was there was open link team, open road team was picking a version which is somewhat older, like a three to four months, six months older than the main branch, and they are collecting it and creating an open lane, and that open lane once again if it is taking it and creating their own additional patch and releasing it to the open source our open source shuttle project teams. So whenever there was a bug and when I report into the main source uh, suppose. When they fix it, taking that to throw the flow itself was becoming a big problem because of the additional patches what if the stream is to add. So it was like because of that, I was faced multiple issues to find out how the tools work, uh, mechanism is there to break it so that I am able to complete my taping activity. So overall, so it, these all things took me more than six months to understand how the flows are implemented. But finally, after uh, around six to eight months, I got to clear the, my tape out uh, checklist. And one of the things I observed is during MPW is there was no clear timing closure mechanism. So they were more on the GDS clean database than the timing closure. That's what the stress was there. And even though I raised multiple times, the interest was there was no less follow up was happened around the timing closure. So this is what was my first experience. In uh, the MPW two, next MPW three was around 15th uh, November 2021 time. That time I, since I had some experience from the previous one, I tried a two tape ports that time. And this time, what I see, it is a uh, somewhat better managed in the sense uh, the open road team himself was managing the uh, total tools uh, directly giving. So the additional patches what he best is to do that got uh, removed. So effectively whatever uh, the open community tools were directly can be easily ported. So that reduced a lot of efforts uh, on my side. So whenever I see a new box are fixed in the main tool, porting became somewhat easy. So so with that and also because of the, my previous shut, uh, whatever the effort, it helped me to uh, clean up the tape out activities well within the timeline. And I can say it's a bit uh, smooth ride for me at least compared to MPW2. And, uh, and MPW4 to MPW6, uh, I done around 8 A-ports. So, and I can, I can say it's, it's, it's a bit smooth ride because of the total understanding what I built upon the previous uh, A-ports helped me. So, around next uh, 3 MPW, I nearly taped out around 8 shutters. We will go through brief on some of these uh, tables, what I have done. This is just to flash what are the tables I done in the MPW shutters. So around uh, 8 na S recipe based tables I done and around 3 non recipe based tables I done. And if you see in MPW two time I attempted only one. In MPW2, three times I attempted two uh, MPW shutters. In MPW4, I tried two. And in MPW3, five, I attempted three tapeboards. And in MPW6, I attempted uh, three tapeboards. We will go a little bit on each and uh, main uh, project to what is there and uh, what is uh, what I was driving there. So this this is the first project what, uh, what I uh, draw in the MPW shuttle MPW two time and uh, here we basically uh, what I took is uh, I took in uh, Santa Cruz uh, Risvi 32 bit core 
and uh, i try to be, i build an h4 uh, interconnect and I added a q uh, called spi master to talk to the external flash because there was no in, inbuilt flash was there flash memories are not there in the uh, sky water foundry or foundry whatever libraries they share we don't have any flash memories and also i integrated an sdram controller for for our data and the data memory purpose for the risk to have a data purpose and also i added some peripherals like a uart i2c master and usb 1.1 host and this was my first mpw two tapers and uh, in this sort of in the design wise i made lot of changes in the uh, system verlock logic around this to match to simulator to work with in the open open schedule tools and one of the things i can highlight is that with this whole thing i am the tool set was i am able to only meet the timing with uh, 50 megahertz only so i made it each blocks this main blocks this whole blocks runs in a different block domain against uh, this we core this we core had its own block domain but till uh, finally the is current the two mpw tool set was able to only meet the reason how i think 50 megahertz only this was my first attempt uh, what i tried in the mpw two time so this is one of the non risk based tapered what i tried in the open shuttle which is like a, which i tried for mbis controller where uh, in mpw two time there were some srams are uh, developed by the other teams and i took both srams and i built an mbis controller where uh, it is going to test uh, how how reliably these memories are coming and i wanted to validate my mbis also which is required for my future and development so i added the mbis controllers so here basically i put uh, four uh, eight uh, uh, memories i think some are 2 kbs some are 1 kbs some type of area yeah. so, so basically i tried an uh, mbis controller with eight mbis controller and eight memories and this aim is to just to see my mbis controller and also how this srams works and here i one more interesting important things i taken care is i given a four location memory memory repair options i given in this mbis control so that is a feature i wanted to validate in this mbis control so next one is uh, just a upgrade version of the previous mbis controller where i tried a logic beast so the current uh, open shuttle doesn't currently support the scan method there you be, there is no way you can implement a scan and validate your design implemented correctly so i done some hacking in the flow and uh, i built an eight channel scan in scan outs i took the previous mb test this uh, project and added a serial scan in and created on my own lb controller where it created the uh, pr based pattern and uh, transfer a duration and checks that the final signature matches with the golden this is just to check how the scan is going to run in that uh, system uh, so this is the project uh, which is one, one of the non risky project which i turned in the open shit so now let's come back to the risd now which is the one which i'm nearly driving or at least i tried nearly i'm trying the eight tapers around this architecture so this is uh, me this is an uh, 32 bit risv based soc design where i am trying to target uh, a pin its, uh, pin its uh, pins are matching with the arduino platforms so so if you see it, uh, this was a somewhat upgraded version of my first uh, risv core and i made some little bit changes in design i added a cache i like instruction cache and data cache and uh, and uh, a tight memory added and i split the core into uh, three sp- three splits the main control of the risc core i separated out and uh, i build an interconnect so that if i want to add a multiple cores i can connect it and uh, so, so they can they connected the directly through the uh, commonly supported an i cache and b cache for them and they uh, and there is a common architecture created for the wishbone interconnect where individual peripherals can be connected so i connected uh, Uh, so the quad spi master and uh, two uarts uh, i2c master and uh, usb 1.1 host and ssp 
and uh, the adc actually i am not at uh, integrated i am looking for some community help to integrate this um, i am more exp uh, expert in the digital side unless i need some help so i am continuously uh, monitoring with something in the open source side things i can build pull and add it here so currently adc is the one which is uh, missing in this design and apart from that i added a pin marks the aim of the pin marks is to match the pins uh, as it in in the audio so so some of the things wise so one more, one more thing i added is i given a uh, booting options so there are three ways you can boot the whole chip you can boot through the caravel has its own uh, wishbone interface you can go through that you can boot the whole chip you can configure it and wake up the risk core so that uh, you can even through this you can configure the external flash and uh, once you uh, program the program it then you can wake up the risk core so the system brings up that things so there is one more mode i given is a uart so uart wise also there is a message handler i built it here the external if you are connecting through the uh, uart you can go and configure as it comes as a master you can go and even configure the flash i given a standard uh, write uh, and read commands through the serial uh, port you can go and configure it even though caravel uh, interface was not working i can go through this and then i can boot the whole system that was the uh, given a backup options here and third option i given is the spa slave so this is uh, something similar to what you see in isp in arduino i made a sim same pin compatible to isp where where you can uh, through the spa of the isp you can go and configure uh, all the flashes and uh, you can bring up the chip so there are three Booting options, what I implemented in the uh, as it is not like in the cast version I supported in MPW. So I, I can say it's over in individual MPW. I done some improvement. Like these are the final uh, design what focus here. And one more thing is uh, one more thing is uh, from MPW six onward, uh, I am able to meet a timing um, at, at at least at hundred megahertz. So previously, as I told in the first one, the maximum time I am able to close is only 50 megahertz. But with the tool improvements and some design changes in the pipeline, now currently the design is able to meet at 100 megahertz, so which is I can say is a good improvement from the the over the shutter. And uh, one more thing I can say is actually the design wise, it is not like a one single clock domain design. So I implemented. Uh, a multi clock domain demands the designs where the risk core has its own clock it has a core so that a timing of risk core is not deciding the rest of the clock domains so system clock has separate clock and this is built with separate clock so so uh, so increment on the risk core can not uh, the timing of the risk core is not um, influencing the system core uh, timings so so basically Created a hierarchical based design so that it is simplifies in backend things. Nearly most of these blocks are independent hard micro inside the design. These are the main highlights of the project, and here just to show it how I am trying to map the uh, region of uh, with the at, at mega and Arduino pins, and uh, here. The pins uh, which are uh, listed in this uh, white color are, from, uh, are the Regino pins. What I am trying to match with the uh, Atmega pins. These the rest of the pins are what Atmega and uh, Arduino is having it. And I am I'm trying to match these pins. And uh, wherever the Ds are there, they are digital pins and unlock A for unlocks. And uh, apart from this, actually. The, uh, the design, the whatever the whatever uh, the projects given 38 pins, and what I needed was so only 24 bits, 24 bits. The rest of the pins, uh, since there is no internal uh, flash and uh, SRAMs, I use them for their external uh, SRAM and flash purpose. Until we have an internal flash option, currently I am totally dependent on the external flash to boot the design. But rest of the 24 pins, I try to match with the Arduino Arduino flash. So overall, if you see, currently I am driving three uh, projects in on, uh, on the Arduino. 
and uh, so i try to create a more uh, some generic concept so that even you have when you add more cores it will work uh, transparently you see currently the first one this dino x core is a single core uh, uh, arduino where i connected only one risc core and uh, really rest of the cores are name functions are same and the second one which i am trying is multi core type wise is a second risc core i brought in here where uh, rest of the interfaces other things are matched uh, but uh, the interconnects uh, has some changes to support the second core here and one more i am supporting is the quad core so uh, currently i am supporting the max up to four core so that is based basically because of the whatever the space free space i have in the open lane shuttle uh, which is uh, 10 mm square currently i am maximum able to fit the four cores that's what these are the three currently i am driving and Most of the time, I am attempting three tapers: one with S cores, a D core, and a quad core. Just to set uh, the, how the physical view is uh, going to look, because normally we will have a doubt uh, when you do an SOC with the 10 mm square, how much space uh, you would have squeezed, whether there is any empty space to add new function, and those questions comes up. So that's the reason I added this uh, my placement view of the each core. just to have a idea how this design how much design is congested or how much free space is there and if you want to add an additional ip uh, so it can is it there is a space is there or not just to highlight it i given this view we see the s core around 30% of the design is free so it is around the uh, total instances 94k instances are there and 85 in that 81k is the combo logics and 13k is the sequential flop server so it is around 100k instance design you see and in that i can see i see around 30% design is free that means if, if i have some additional ips uh, i can go and add it so it is not so congested and i am i am looking as the tools are getting improved so the utilization of the info it should have it and you should get a more a smaller area it will take for each ip so you will get some more ips you can plug it so i can see the 10 mm square is a good space to play around to create any good and iot chip and uh, just to just to see the little bit dense again uh, deep core with still the 15 to 20 percent free space is there <coughs> this is around 120k instance uh, design the core core is somewhat congested i can say this only is less than 5% free space is there which i i will reserve kept for an adc here otherwise uh, it's nearly filled space and that is the reason i stopped at a core code because there was no much space left for me to add additional cores this is i see around 160k instance design this is just given a brief how this resdino over the period can help uh, over the arduino just i try to put my way so currently if you see the arduino there are uh, fixed memories are there flash memories if you want to take anything you have to bring one more different uh, configurations of the arduino to build it since currently it is an external flash you can go and uh, add uh, additional flash and it's up to 64 mb there is no limit on uh, whatever flash you want to add there and uh, so if you want to do an add a add on so you need typically in order to cases you need to bring the new new boards uh, new new ch uh, chip configuration you need to bring but here you can design you can add those configurations into the uh, your resdino project itself so that you can create like, your customized uh, chip which uh, nearly matches like an arduino means you can even compare in arduino environment itself one one thing i missed in my discussion time was uh, it is not only pin compatible it is going to run in the arduino ide itself so you can even run the your uh, c code in the arduino for platform with the package of the arduino you can compile it and you can use that in my uh, our arduino project so currently at least stick to 8 c code of the arduino Arduino software I ported already. I am cleaning up one by one the firmware. Hopefully, within some time I will have a very clean Arduino platform there. 
and uh, you see and some of the Arduino features missing I can see the, the keyboard some of those features are missing you can go and add those into this SOC and also if you want to reduce the design so Arduino is like it's already hard and correct but since this is a soft IP for you these people can use that to reduce some of the IPs which you feel not required and you can decide what IP is required and you can go and optimize it and this is still valid for your power and performance also you can go and squeeze that design so that you can get a much better uh, controlled design this is just just my first thought on the Rizdino project when I started this is just to show what is the open source shuttle wise what are my just going back and uh, just going back on open source shuttle just to say what are my pin points and what are the issues currently I see in the open source setup. See one of the main issue I can see is even though tape ports are happening as per the dates, chip delivery is not happening. So even though I done my first tape port in June 2021, still I have not received my first tape chip. So it is already running one year back now. Hopefully EWS team take it uh, seriously and uh, try to get some chips as early as possible so that our silicon iteration will complete so that uh, the next chip will be comes out in a bet better, better shape otherwise we are just whatever the uh, issues we are thinking from a verification angle only we are modified we are not getting a silicon data which is the I think is the one of the critical thing uh, is missing one more thing I can say is the MPW shuttles are continuously that the tool flows are continuously getting changed the projects like ask me mine which is uh, uses the previous shuttle to continue so once again I need to readjust this flow so from my angle if you see I am looking more from the tool implement than the flow I feel flows are somewhat okay I don't see much changes are required I am looking for a more in the tool implement um, but currently I see both are getting into a change but readjusting them it's also is a becoming one type of pain I can see Third important thing I can see is still some critical functions are missing in the open source shuttle program. Like even the SRAM is there, only only one KV and two KV, only two type of SRAMs are released for the people to use it. But also not fully qualified, so that is the risk we are carrying. And I don't see any flash or EPROM currently available for user to use it. Another thing I can see is the uh, LEC and the scan uh, is still not those functionals are not integrated so we have a, a big risk if you want to be thinking for a commercializing tape ports this tape port can be used for commercial purpose still I think this critical function mixing uh, I see it's still we, are, we need to close this to say we can use these tape ports for commercial and also low power methodology I don't see any uh, direction how we can go into even low power methodology to reduce the power clock gating those things I, I don't see a clear methodology yet. and one more thing which I see is uh, to directly use my chip into actual any commercial or after any ports issue I see the Caravel the default harness setup because if you see currently already Caravel team have their own recipe core and I also have one more recipe core it is like a duplicate recipe core so that to hinders uh, to just to create a proof of concept what you want to create then I need to keep, keep two flash which is uh, which which is somewhat uh, is deviating from a standard board configurations I think that's one thing I can say is a critical issue what I see from this shit as a summary wise what I can say is it is a great opportunity for the university and researchers uh, from the for the software people since, since all the tools are open there are plenty of opportunity to improve it so, so all the source codes are available in the GitHubs. people who are having a good idea they can go and use it improvise it so it's a good opportunity for the, all the idiot uh, software people who want to contribute to the open source and also for the research community in the VLC domain also they can plan their new chips around uh, new new ICs around the, IoT healthcare and automation. Mm, these are the things so what I, I had it for this today presentation. That's all I had it. Thanks a lot for your wonderful experience on sharing this and I'm very, very 
surprised that you haven't received the MPW2 chips because from my understanding that they should be already sent to their participants. So <laughs> this is kind no, of... MPW1 only, MPW1 only they are given. MPW2 they are saying uh, August and they are I see. I see. And I can completely under uh, completely ag agree with you that the users needs to needs to improve improvements instead of their fancy flow <laughs> improvements because we are the users of the the the, the open land and we want you to use it to do our projects just like yours, your risk Duino, which is very inspiring and we want it to work. And also the harness SOC from eFabless is kind of restrictive to users. I can agree with you that uh, because many people here in Taiwan are actually thinking that maybe we can use the harness uh, use the MPW uh, sponsored MPW shuttle to do their test trips and for tiny or you know the Soho this oh sorry <laughs> the, 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 the screen flickers so I, I was thinking that I was disconnected anyway uh, so many Soho's and many makers are thinking that they will once think that they can use the uh, free shuttle to do their products but this is not the case just as you, just as you say because the harness chip is there and the uh, IO control is very you know not very working <laughs> because uh, from my understanding really? yeah yeah the 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 people from and uh, if I remember correctly that some people are complaining that the uh, GPIO control from the harness chip is actually broken yeah, so <laughs> that is very sad. Uh, but one, uh, so regarding your slides, I have one thing one, one we wish to ask. That is, uh, uh, you, you 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 have mentioned that you have many uh, risk five cores. You know, you have the the risk, uh, double core risk duno and the three cores unit uh, risk 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 duno and the four cores unit risk duno. So how the the cores interact with with each other. Do you have any kind of uh, mailbox that uh, one core could notify another core that what it what it is doing, or is it just planning uh, use some kind of a uh, polling mechanism to con communicate with, with each other? Currently, this would hard hardware semaphore way that and I because see. each one is I don't know to say uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You can't hear me? Huh, sorry. Uh, I can, can you hear I, me? I, I can hear you. Uh, s sorry, did I say something wrong or? No, no, I'm not able to hear you. I'm able to hear you, but you're not able to hear you. Uh, we're having some kind of connection error, so. Uh, can I log in? Again? Okay, so hi, yes, hi, hi. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually, there's, there's. I just want to ask that do you, do you have kind of a mailbox to for your risk five course to connect with, with each others on your risk two nil, uh, or is just plainly uh, via the you know memory swapping kind of stuffs. Okay, I see. Thanks a lot for your wonderful project. And do we have any questions on the on the field? No. Okay. So thank you very much, and we wish you a great success in the following MPW shout house. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks. Huh? Okay, 
topic 会比较，也就是加上讲者有口音啦，所以就是听起来其实会比较辛苦一点。就是隔壁那边因为是呃葡萄牙人，不过他因为长期在就是这种 conference， 所以他的口音会相对来说比较是台湾人比较轻轻松可以听得懂的。对，所以有兴趣的话，可以可能等一下这场会是日本人啊，所以也是口音也是比较重一点的。如果各位是比较想要更 participate 更深一点，可能隔壁那一那一场讲 hypervisor 会，好、啊、是。诶、欸，我我其实手上，因为我现在手上没有那张表。对对对对对对，是的，是的，是的。Nicholas 果然是专业的。<笑>呃，我觉得也跟因为他的 ISA 是 pattern free 有关啦，就是当然你可以说 MIPS 也是现在就反而也很便宜，可是就以学术界来讲，大家一定是喜欢这种 open pattern 的人啊，对。所以，嗯、呃，我们公司有赞助这场研讨会，对，就是我们是 Golden Sponsor。那我们的确也是像像接下来这个讲者，他抱歉，我我快速稍微 take up 一下。就是我们的确也是有像有一些 open source 的 code， 那就会希望说可以让就是讲者可以做不讲者，让让我们的 partner 可以可能 maybe 先做前前期的测试啦，跟 t a b l 对，像我们这场就是他拿我们的 open source 版本的131去做他的 production 的对有些 prototype。那其实像对啊，我我我其实这我这边其实很好笑，我看着我前公司是那个。嗯，就不就不就因为那边有卖，我就不讲前公司是什么了。然后现在在 s c i f i 对，那他们那，所以对我们呃，像我们的 CTO 是那个 Young Subly 勇哥，勇哥在念都是念 s c i f i 然后那个 Christian 就是我们的呃 CEO 跟 Co-founder 也是念 s c i f i 对对。然后我我讲我快速讲，他就是说我们的我我们的。Policy 是尽量希望可以 enable 一些客户。那我们的卖卖控有一些其实 license 都很便宜，然后甚至是 open source， 像这个客户就是拿他原本是用我前公司的 core， 就是后来就看到哎、欸，你有就是 Safari 这边有 free and open source 的 core， 那想拿 evaluate 一下，就这样去做 prototype。对对对对，所以其实是一个还蛮 free 的一种，就是就是 free to engage 啊。对，因为其实很多公司你这种要 evaluation core 可能都要签 NDA 或者什么，那我们就对。对，那这边就是这边，但也如果你要比较好的，那当然要签 NDA。可是就如果你只是只是 want to, want a taste of the respy， 然后 some basics of peripherals such as the interrupt controllers or stuff like that is free and open source. You can just take it on from a GitHub. Yep. 我后面这一场其实很担心会不会会不会黄掉，因为其实他很最后才敲定，然后他当时又有，因为他其实有些 slice 是他的 partner 的的 property， 然后他就来回 check 了很久，才说他可以讲，可是后来他 email response 又不是非常的 responsive， <笑>可是我就已经反正我我是打算说，就是他如果真的不行啊，因为反正我后面那一场我。我我是有很十足的把握，我后面那一场其实他讲者是做 A P J 开发版的，那他他很他他跟我很熟，所以我可以很自由调用他的时间，对，对，就是日本往后面这是最后一场，那那是讲那个 Open Source A P J Board 的 Design， 比较偏那种 P C B Design， 就是我们这边也叫 Force Enable Hard Project， 毕竟再怎么样讲也不是就是 s c i f i 成果发表会这样，对，所以我们一定是会要尽量。各 diversity 的这种 topic 都 include 进来，包含包含 PCB 的 design， 对，就大概是会是这个状况。这场接下来应该是三十五分，对，可是，对，你们先忙，你们先忙，对我我我今天有可能会黄掉啊。其实我觉得你们如果真的有想听的 topic， 先去听旁边的 topic， 对，就这个我现在到现在那个日本人还没进来，我不知道什么状况，对吧？<笑>就是对那种嘿。我会找他，我会找他，哎，稍微。对他讲的很好，对对对。所以他从设计到到 PC， 对啊，我原本之前看那个 Open Day， 但是我还没下手。我听到 notification， 我有点害怕，我先我要先处理一点事情，不好意思。
这这可能先先先让我，对不起，我我我我我有我有我有我有,我有那个 business card， 就是我我我零钱也 OK， 可是对不起，我现在这边我现在这边真的有点手忙脚乱，我我那个 business card 在这边，真的不好意思，我先处理一下那个，就对。那 Respect Pi Four 最看 Res p e c t Pi Four Model B 也是通过 System Ready IR 认证的。不止不止如此，其实 Respect Pi Four Model B 也通过了 System Ready ES 的认证，也就是说它支援支援 ACPI 的。这个我们晚一点再谈。嗯，好，帮我下一张。好，那各位在买板的时候要注意一下 ，System Ready IR 目前是有分成。没事，抱歉，我刚因为因为我我刚我我现在两轨，所以我现在手上有点有点乱。对，还还没。对，可是他，反正我我最后一场那个时间非常非常的 free， 我跟我跟最后就我这我这一轨最后一场，我跟他讲说我我会需要非常 flexible 的搬动他的 session， 然后他。在哪里啦？这样恐怖哦、喔！一直听到 notification， 那东西不知道在哪里，靠腰。我上面，然后到底哪里在喷那个 notification？ 他什么？三十五分，现在这场就是。就是本来没出现，对。嗯、刷赛，真真的没有啊！我觉得，啊，真真的没出现，不知道什么状况。他，我我我是跟，因为当初其实谈的很临时，所以我连他的 connect， 就是我甚至连他的，就我只有他 email， 对我没有他的任何其他的联系手段。然后我现在非常的囧，哎，啊天啊！因为跟他是有改过一次时间啦，所以他
他如果真的，如果他完全是，我我先，对我，对，就。有联络到他了，可是他说他为了三印，可是我现在，呃，刚刚三印什么状况？Hey, Kawasaki. So sorry, so sorry, so sorry for the, the, <laughs> the, the. I know that the the arrangement has been kept ch changing, and I'm very, very sorry. My sincere apology to all the inconvenience. Oh, that's no problem. So, um, are you guys ready? For this? Yeah, yeah, we have plenty of. Uh, let me show you around. <laughs> Here are okay. our audiences, and they are very eager to know from your your experience and also the race fight Tokyo days. They are very excited to know things about it. Okay, thanks. So let's see how that goes. How that goes? Let's see. All right. Um. Mm, yeah, this is it. So, do I uh, have I share the sc screen? Yeah, it's up and running, very clear. And okay, so, great. Okay, you you can you can you can just uh, start your session, and uh, without further ado, let's uh, give a big hands to the speaker. Okay, thanks. Um, my name is uh, Shunpei Kawasaki. I, sh I show up on, as uh, the second author because this is about the, the chip de development. And um, 
I'm titling this uh, presentation Marmot RISC V SOC Leveraging Open Source ISA IP Process Development Kit and the EDA Tools. And then I collaborated on this uh, like effort with at the University of Electro Electrocommunications. So um, today's agenda is like I'll have a short introduction about lightweight IoT to, that we did in 2016. And then now we are working on the bridge structural health monitoring IoT. And then we talk about some, th some little things about the how hardware security, and like remote IoT authenticity proof, and uh, open source software security, such as root of trust chip integration over the air software update, and uh, open source Marmot Risk V SOC finally and then future directions and summary. So um, SH Consulting has been around since 2013, and then uh, we also have this subsidiary in, in Vietnam that's 2014, and we have been, um, in our prior life, we did the SH Flash MCU chips, embedded software and hardware and development tools, video games, Java card, secure MCU firmware, from FIPS 140 certification. So we did, since like 2013, we started out a ultra lightweight IoT, and which actually only weighed at 180 grams. And then no one else actually pursued this like lightweight IoT side. So when the volcano activity started in um, Kyushu Island, uh, we had um, top share for a very short period of time for drone, drone transported, transported I, IoT. And in 2008-19, we decided to just actually increase further that application market size to capture this infrastructure IoT for structural health monitoring to be applied to bridge. And in the meanwhile, we did all sorts of things like designing consumer equipment, motor control, and an automotive ECU, but I think what happened was that the IoT survived. So that in 2018, suddenly, like that, the Sakurajima just erupted, and uh, suddenly, like that, the, they needed the drone to just actually host up the host uh, IoT to a very dangerous area where sulfuric acid gases around. And then in it, like that, we use that uh, wireless IoT. And in the 2013, we have been always trying to just actually do that, uh, like implement um, risk five. And uh, we finally were able to do it by um, having one of our guys just actually started as a PhD student and then use that academic um, fan. And then this is um, based upon ROM 0.18 micrometer. And then we use that the same exact uh, rocket um, SOC generator to generate this chip. And it is like that uh, 5 meter by 5 meter, 180 nanometer ROM shuttle with a fairly reasonable amount of 64-bit architecture, RV64GC. Um, and <clears throat> in the meanwhile, that uh, this whole Mammoth IoT system has been uh, developed. Oh, and uh, this figure shows an example. And essentially what it, this does is like it doesn't have any cable connection. Uh, Everything is done by the, the wireless. And, and, uh, Mr. Essentially, that's... Hi, yes. Mr. Sorosa, I'm so sorry to interrupt, uh, but uh, I'm not sure if you're uh, showing your slides or because your slides freeze at the very first page. Oh. So I'm wondering... If, so I was, I was thinking that, oh, it's a very long intro, but I was, I was thinking, no, you're referring to some pictures. So I'm thinking Why? that... <laughs> that's that's not, that, that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, sorry for interrupt. And I, 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 
a new uh, slide now? Yeah, I can, I can see the, the, sc uh, the scrolling to your side. Uh, we are now on uh, slide s seven. Uh, now it's eight. Okay, that's good. So uh, I'll just actually use use the, the slide like this um, rather than using that. Uh, uh, the presentation. I see. I see. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I will. I will share around your slides after the talk, and we'll keep going okay. here from here. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So like back back to the, the chip topic. This is the chip that we did in 2019 using academic shuttle. But the only problem with that academic shuttle is we can't carry this chip outside of that uh, campus because. Of course, you know, like once you build a chip, you have to just integrate it in, into the board and then just actually see, and then the software integrations and so forth. But um, so a restriction by that the two companies didn't allow that to happen. So what happened was essentially um, we um, had a very good experience, but then we just actually um, started back to this board system, I mean, system development, which is, which we call Mamad system. And um, so the way that it works is like that you just put on a different part of that the bridge um, things like gateway and an endpoint. And then typically like that you use like multiple endpoints for like that the gateway. And then every sensor that, um, and an actuator that shows up in the, um, this type of setting is all connected to um, by wireless. And what it does is essentially, you know, there's a dis displacement that the bridge causes. And then over the season, you know, like it displaces and every day because of the temperature dis displacement changes. And then you capture and then monitor, and then somehow you are able to figure out what kind of a structural health that the bridge span has. Actually, this is like more like the know-how of that, uh, the companies that are using those type of IoTs. So the type of um, application needs is like long-term, no maintenance, like five years of like usage, left as is. And of course, it has to be harvest its own energy, um, solar energy and uh, lithium batteries. But, you know, like since it doesn't have any kind of cable whatsoever, the installation, installation is very cheap because you only have to just nail down those devices and then program. And uh, also, obviously, like that, uh, you would like to have that over the air software upgrade from the remote location. Also, um, obviously, uh, because this is like regional government, and then they don't have a whole lot of money. Um, but first of all, like, like there are like seven hundred thousand bridges in Japan, and then about ninety percent of them are just owned by municipalities rather than the central government, and they don't have a whole lot of budget to just actually burn on that uh, monitoring bridges and then decaying infrastructure. So this is more like very unattractive um, marketing. But yet, um, you know, like it moves, moves slow enough that uh, we can catch up as a small company. But anyway, so using the consumer grade components for low cost is like one of the uh, requirements. and. Uh, also, system security against hacking. If um, all those like a, like a, like a boxes are just hacked by someone else, it's going to be all sorts of sad, um, you know, like incident. So therefore, that we didn't um, really <coughs> want to have that happen. And uh, um, another thing is, so this is like the set very like looking very cheap using that uh, off the shelf boxes but it has got the gateway master slave endpoint and sensor and actuary and then suddenly we we move into this uh, like risk 5 thing so as as we are using like risk 5 ip as as a chip 
for this uh, system. And then um, the, the, the type of like risk five that we're going to be using is at the bottom here, like 32 bit chip that has got Altos on it. Over the years that we have uh, developed both like Linux IoT and then Altos IoT, and then it, we found out that Linux IoT, in the end of the day, it you know, consumes like five, minimum five, of, <clears throat> and so in some cases, 50 watts of power. In com compared to that, uh, like Altos IoT can actually run some tasks on 50 milliwatts to 180 milliwatts. Because like that, uh, the memory is a thousand times bigger in the Linux IoT compared to Arctos. Anyway, so we did the demo in 2019 using like the Tandes board on the RISC-V, integrating the, the secure element. And then we, we started use, doing more and more of like the uh, um, things like OTA integration into RISC-V. And then, uh, finally, um, we came up with this notion that there was the free Altos risk five porting in 2021 that you do need relatively large flash memory and RAM in order to run this free Altos um, secure connection to AWS using um, root of trust chip and an OTA uh, software upgrade. So uh, we decided that maybe we're going to develop our own risk file that actually has um, supports that the larger memory, which is um, necessary for um, um, various IoT functions like OTA and secure chip integration. So. <clears throat> Um, in February of 2022, a decision was made to participate in multi-project wafer 5 that Google offers. And then February 26, we decided to create a bunch of wish lists. And we find this wish list very important because a lot of times, like Zen's, you know, like the, the beginners, has got more perception than experts. And uh, so we, we have this like initial thoughts, very important because later on you go back and then fix the project, you know, you use this like wish list. So even though that the engineering wise that the wish list hardly means anything, but it actually helps later to go back to what you initially intended. But anyway, in March 16th, rocket SOC generation and logic simulation was complete. Uh, by the way, we are using this on Google's, like Google and then DAPA's open road um, chip flow, chip de design flow. And um, March 16th, we were able to finish the uh, logic simulation. And the open, lo open logic synthesis job threw an error in the middle. And the reason was, obviously, um, the error was caused by memory deprivation of PC. So we uh, went out to Akihabara and bought two Intel Mac Mini and then upgraded it to 64K byte, gigabyte RAM. And in March 19th, open lane synthesis completed somehow. Message shows that the tool consumes 35 gigabytes of memory. Due to the scale of logic, the rocket's SOC generator outputs 200 k bytes of logic, two gates of logic, and then an excess of 35 gigabytes of RAM, and then three hours were consumed in order to do this routing. An additional iteration was made to address the hold violations, and each took three hours. Each run took three hours. Open run RAM layout through tons of DCR, DRC errors. And then on March 20th, Slack, open, slash open main, and then GitHub issue community is open.
，没声音吗？呃 ，sorry， 呃，卡瓦萨基桑，卡瓦，呃 ，we're we're we're having trouble to hear from you， 呃、uh, ，let me check if I can， 呃、uh, ，I I will I will I will leave the session for just a minute to rejoin the the session to see if we can sort this audio problem. Hi, can you hear me? Eh? Uh, so sorry, uh, um, 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 let, let me just uh, hang in here. I will be sharing, I will be doing some quick uh, debugging. I, I can see I can see that your your voice is coming in actually, but uh, it's probably from my end. So I, I will be keep uh, talking and I will be keep uh, Let me see if I can do anything to to. Kawasaki uh, san. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe I uh, can you use the Skype. Uh, I I I will, I will uh, go go another machine to use Skype to talk with. Uh. So what happened is um, we have um, worked on that, we regrouped and then decided to design. And then decided to write Chisel for like a QPI PS1 interface mapped to CPU address space. So original Sci-5 IP has, can map flash to that uh, CPU address space, but not PS RAM. So we had on May 2nd that we had to pay, you know, like to get the PS RAM model from like to simulate the QPI interface. Obtain the model of IOTD RAM, a fancy name for PS RAM with the QPI. The model provided contained ex encrypted very long. So the designer had to move from Icarus very long to model sim Questa to run simulation. And finally, main 29 leverage sci leveraging sci fi E300 chisel code with the original specification. We modified 400 lines of chisel. The engineer only needed to correct the logical description part and then was able to create the SPI interface and map PS RAM to memory synthesis and layout was repeated due to the fact that RAM is at the top of 100 lines of very long again had to be manually modified. 
I mean, June second project was modified. So essentially, like that, we use this eFabless Calgary asset, which actually does have a lot of functions to assist you and then create the sandbox. And then we still have many questions, like you probably are very interested in asking questions like chisel versus very low. You know, like how chisel performs compared to very low, for instance. And uh, um, also, you probably want to ask things like, how does how does that open road, open source EDA tool chain, performs against commercial EDA? And uh, also, external memory um, power simulation. Can you do power simulation? What are we, what are we going to do about um, MPW7? But anyway, these are the many of the questions that we still have an answer. But anyway, uh, one thing that is good is we can evaluate the chip once it's back. So, um, for every SOC, we need an evaluation plan. The best way to do it is build the chip in the system and give some role. This, in this specific instance, we gave a current monitoring task to Mama. Current monitoring, I mean, power current monitoring task to Mama. Once we receive a chip, we build our SOC into the system. And here's that uh, Mammoth Power Supply Board that actually has got the six power rails and then current measurement output for six 3.3 volt power rails. And uh, we are able to just actually measure current of that the various parts of the system like this. Also, another interesting thing is, particularly like a network Wi-Fi processors, there's no way to check the packets. So the only way that if it is doing okay or if it's not corrupted by malware is to evaluate the, the power waveform. And then this is the, the one area that we are working to just actually figure out what we can do with this type of stuff. And... Um, um, this is where that I have where the original data. So like the, the Caravel GitHub, you, you know, like that the Sci Five Z Five E three ten, and then you have Open RAM Chipyard, and then there's a bunch of other things. So okay, I'll summarize that the presentation. Essentially. Um, Artus consumes less power than Linux, so suitable for energy harvesting IoT. And then another thing is, like as in, the, in, in the, our working, we found out that the root of trust chip integration and security firmware upgrade takes more memories than we anticipated. And then number three, measuring chip current is a useful practice might be able to detect malware and then how to implement or cloning of that the system. Number four is we designed a custom IP to give the SOC megabytes of flash and RAM mapped to CPU memory space so that aforementioned memories are actually being supplied. So we leveraged Rocket Open Source IP Sky 130 open source PDK and open lane open source EDA tool. And of course, before all that, Risk Five open architecture. So we pretty much, of course, free so free Arctos is also open source. Yes, everything is pretty much open source. And we plan to continue SLC efforts on the, the MPW7. So I have to acknowledge that this result was obtained as a result of Secure Open Architecture Fundamental Technology and its AI Edge Applied Research and Development, commissioned by New Energy and then Industrial Technology Development Organization. So that's pretty much my presentation. 
and uh, if you have any question, I should be able to answer. Thank you very much, Kawasaki. Oh. Very thank th thank you very much. And uh, personally, I have a question that uh, there are many open source uh, RISC-V SOCs and uh, cores. So why did you pick uh, the Rocket E31 instead of others? Is there a particular reason for for choosing the E31? So what happens is like that. Uh, it's very rare that you know E3310 like G003 is just being productized and being sold as a chip. And then its IP is actually also open source. That's very rare, I think. So um, one, you know, like the, the, all the peripheral functions and then everything seems to be working okay because we have been using this platform for like the last three years in, in addition to like a Anders platform for risk five. And then uh, we, we do know that IPs are reliable. That's the reason that I uh, use that uh, um, rocket IP, I if that has to answer the question. Yeah, that's very clear. And I'm, I'm so, so inspired as well. Uh, do, so I will be asking the people here if they have any questions. Uh, OK, so most of them are. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of hot in Taiwan now, so people are feeling dizzy, and so I will be I will do the asking. Uh, so uh, I'm quite wondering that uh, do you have encounter any kinds of uh, you know hiccups on using the open LAN because it is very it is still in the early stage of the development, and from my understanding that uh, many uh, you know the the ch the check. The, the analysis and checks from the commercial tools are not supported in open LAN. So is there any any uh, errors or bugs you have encountered and you and you think is very worth sharing with us? So what happens is like um, as far as I can see, we didn't even see a single DRC error on standard cell. So I am open I mean, Skype 130 open road, and um, therefore that the standard cell is very well, well much, very mature, and then all those DRC and then LVS is okay, but on the open RAM, I think it's, I guess that the DRC and then the LVS is not mature yet, but it is maturing very quickly because. Nobody has used that the huge like RAM before, but in the, like maybe last half a year, everybody is starting to use huge open RAM. So, I think it's going to be okay as we as time goes on. I see, and yeah, thanks very much because uh, uh, a, a bunch of people I know have tried to use open RAM on their own and. The open range is quite broken for their design. So if Fansible pointed that out, I, we will be very looking forward to the improvements on open RAN and also on the, I'm sorry, uh, let me rephrase it a bit. Will there be a, gen, a generation two of more mod SOC or this will be the last one? Uh, pardon me? Oh, sorry. Uh, it, will, will there be another generation of the M uh, Marmot, the SOC you did, you have designed. Will there be a generation two? So uh, I guess uh, for us, for us, I think we are planning to just actually run another run, or oh, another generation of Risk Five, and then if possible, we would like to do that the SH two too. I mean, uh, open source some of those like IPs that we have been developing for last years. And uh, if that, is that the am I answering your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. That would, I, I, I was asking a very weird question. So thank you for clearing things up and I understand c clearly. So uh, do we have questions here? Nope. Uh, one last question from my end. Uh, I'm I'm curious that uh, because you're in collaboration with the UEC, which is the uh, I, I think I, I'm pronouncing it right. So, mm -hmm. is, are they trying to uh, 
engage with the RISPI community more, or this is just a, an, another one-shot program? Well, I think that the um, UEC has been very advanced. It has been doing like a very, uh, how should I say, ambitious plan, like uh, implementation of Risk Five, and in the past, and then uh, separate from us, and then together with us. So, so you know, they are really into this Risk Five right now. So, yeah, thank you very much, and yes. thanks for joining us in such, such a short notice. I'm very, very, very sorry, and I'm very happy to have you here. So I think that will be the end, and arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. So I'll sign off, thanks. Oh. <laughs> <笑>我離下一場還有多遠<笑> 三點零我超時而且已經開始了吧已經開始了 
Tabor and Marco agreed on the features and the student would need for learning digital logic, and Tabor started hacker development. At that time, however, I was just helping them with some ideas. Unix 2S is designed by, is designed by Mike Marcos X. is looking like this. Design was not available at all, and a production company that did production for, for a university lost design files at some point. So Marco and Dava agreed that the only solution for a new board is to be open from start, with design files available for everyone. On the Unix 3S, they decided to go with the Lattice ACP5 FPGA chip. Dava put a lot of effort to make more compatible with different ACP5 sizes. On Unix 3S, we can use 12F, 45F, 85F, and with small correction on one power supply, we can also use UM and UM 5G devices. We have discovered that 12F is enough for most of the project, but the most sellable device is still 85F. Second part of ULX 3S is SDRAM memory. Maximum memory on ULX 3S can have 60, is 64 megabytes, but we have only one batch with 64 megabytes. All other batches are 34 megabytes, as that is mostly enough. Idea behind SDRAM over DDR memory was some already done projects like Minimi Oberon Max 186 and similar retro projects. At that time, Free FPGA board also had SDRAM, so we wanted to be more compatible. As for the programming, UNX 3S can be programmed over US1, USB connector, that is connected directly to FTDI chip. For programming, we are mostly using Wiprock, that is for of Marco Z's Wiprock, but there are also other tools like OpenFPGA Loader. Beside US1 connector, we also have US2 connector, that is directly connected to FPGA pins. We can use that connector for USB bootloader, or we can use it as a USB host and has some external devices like keyboard, mouse, or joystick connected. Just in case something goes wrong, what is also programmable over our JTAG connector. Along with the JTAG connector, on top of it, there is also OLED connector placeholder. For bigger data, we have SD card. We can use it in SDI mode or 4 bit mode. SD card has shared connections between FPGA and ESP32, so devices can talk with the card, of course, not on the same time. On the board, on the board there are also 8 LEDs. 8 was a great number, as we did, we can represent full byte. On FPGA designs, LEDs are easy way of debugging some internal signals, so you, so you will always need more lights. There is no fancy step-by-step -step debugging in FPGA, but you can always assign some signals to LED and check what is happening here. As for the outputs, we also have GPDI, General Purpose Differential Interface, that we are mostly using for outputting DVI video signals. HDI monitor, HDMI monitors are mostly compa compatible with DVI signaling, so you can get a picture on most monitors or televisions. Next connector can be used for audio or video output. For audio, we are using simple 4-bit resistor divider. On the board, we have 7 buttons that are organized like a joystick. So we can play retro games directly on those buttons. Only one button, button 0, has inverted logic and we are mostly using that button for a set. That button can also be used for powering board on and off, and if one dial is added to the board, we can use that button as a multi-boot jump, so we can jump to our next bit stream in flash. As an input, we also have four deep switches, as, as, as switches are really always useful. Last thing on the top side is a small ADC. It is 12-bit ADC that can have eight, eight single-ended inputs or four differential inputs. Idea behind adding ADC was from Arduino, as users always want to add some external analog devices or just have the potentiometers. On the top, on the bottom side, we have three power supplies. We are using Texas Instrument chip that can provide up to two amps of current. 
if we are placed UM or UM 4G chip, we just need to change one resistor to get 1.2 volts instead of standard 1.2. It can also be used for overclocking. This is just a FPDI chip that is used for FPGA programming, but also as a USB to serial interface to FPGA logic. In new version, we have switched to QFM version of the same chip. As FPGA starts, it only starts empty and depending on settings check for the, checks for the bitstream. In our case, bitstream can be placed in flash. In flash, we have 64 megabytes of flash, so something, sometimes we are also using it for other purposes like holding ROM games. One of, one of special features of the ULX 3S is RTC chip that has small memory that can hold a lot. So we can use this setup to have RTC in, for example, Linux, but the design is also made in a way that RTC can provide wake alarm for, for the board. Board can be powered down and on alarm it can wake up. While in power down mode it only consumes 10 microamps. Battery is only to keep RTC time. So you will, need, you will still need to provide 5 volts for the board. Last thing on the back of the door is ESP32. And as designs of ESP32 changes, we have a footprint design that in that way so it can hold rover or ROM modules of versions of ESP32. ESP32 arise with, with preloaded MicroPython and combining as the external MCU and FPGAs gives endless possibilities. One of the cool Usage of ESP32 is having OSD overlay on the top of the FPGA picture. So in retro games, you can browse SD card and load game, game ROM on the fly. ESP32 also gives this board wireless and Bluetooth. So we can connect to external, external network on which, or we can use Bluetooth for different things. Once I was using ESP32 to connect to external, external Bluetooth speaker, so I had I had FPGA sound core playing sound on external Bluetooth speaker. And how and here is how current version of the board looks like. A few more things I didn't mention. Oscillator on the board is 25 megahertz. Why? Well, this value is not so important. And you can use as you can use internal PLL to get almost any clock value. We have three more LEDs that are used for serial connection and ESP32 identification. On each side we have 40 pins that are arranged in a way to be pin mode compatible. Out of 56 pins on header, 28 are differential pairs. Small f connector is here so we can call ESP32 in reset just in case it takes over the SD card. And G5 can be used to switch left bank's voltage to 2.5 volts or we can provide other smaller external voltages like 1.8 volt if needed. On the top right side of the header there is also 5 volt input output so you can provide 5 volt over that connector or use USB and have 5 volt out for external peripheral devices. Just a quick overview of the front side of the board and the back side of the board. Campaign of the ULX board was quite successful and until now we have sold and delivered around 2,000 two, two boards. Those are, really those are real high numbers for a small startup. There is only other things I did not mention about this board, so I will show you a campaign video that is showing a lot of interesting projects that are running on this board. Enjoy the minute video while I am having a sip of water.
may have noticed in the year that we are most used of open source toolchain. UNXPS would never be so popular if offer open tools are not available. So our, our big thanks goes to your HTTP that is making enormous effort in providing open and available toolchain. Thank you, Yosos So after campaign, we could not sell that amount of work over our makerspace. So we have decided to open a company that will handle everything around your experience and be focused on new open source hardware software solutions. We named the company Intergal. Once World War produced, we had we we needed to have some batch testing. We already had internal tests that was good for checking if board is okay. But when you have thousand boards at once, you need some scripting. Dominic Sapovich helped us on this first batch and made our awesome batch script testing. Batch script was great when I was doing it, but once I switched testing to a production company, they were quite lost with those scripts. So I had asked Nbox if they can help us. A month later, I got this fancy GUI tester that any production company can understand. There is a bunch of UXPS examples out there. So we have created, let's call it startup page, that we are refreshing from time to time to include every project we found. And what GitHub is also full of your XGS goodies. So make sure you check missed examples that are covering all board peripherals. We have also designed a lot of open, open extensions for the UXGS. And we are currently selling three of them. First is the USB extension that gives you two additional USB, USB host ports. As for, as, some projects you will need, as for some projects you will need mouse and keyboard. Or even just GPDI can be used for additional GPDI output. It can also be used as DVI input. We have samples of getting 640 by 480 input, but it may need a bit more work as timings is not automated. So you need to find adjust timings with the balance to get stable picture. With high resolutions also work, but it is harder to get timings right and high resolutions can have more, more noise. The last extension we are selling is for OV camera. You can use it, you can use up to two extensions of one new XDS board. Check other extensions, extensions on my GitHub account. As for our availability of UXDS and extension boards, you can check Crowd Supply, Mouser, or Android site. Or you can contact me directly. I have already mentioned Edbox. They have great they have great open source projects. So at some point we decided to collaborate and combine BB3 measuring equipment with UNXPS. We, we did manage to do it, but it was painful to combine EZ MCU board and UNXPS, as any Edbox boards was done in Eagle. And UNXPS designs are in Kika. After adding FPGA to Enox projects, others started to ask the same. So I was thinking, why not make a UXTS model? So everyone can easily put a connector and have FPGA in the system. UXTS has, has too many components for that, and it was big to big for integration. So I have asked the Net Foundation, will they help me making a modular version of the board? And they accepted my offer. So they are financing the development of two modular ports. As making connected fit is not easy, we are also decided to have 3D models first. And MLN also agreed on financing 3D modeling and experimenting with Blender. All 3D work is done by Power Launcher, also a developer. And here are some pictures from the Blender. Power also need to use Recap at some point, as there is no easy way of importing geometry, geometry into Blender. You can read more about the Blender progress at intergalactic.eu under news, as we are trying to record our progress in the blog. 
We have tested different connectors, but at the end we got to a conclusion that connector that is used on Raspberry CM4 model is good enough for everything our board will, our, our board, board will offer. It is also available and cheap. And once we have selected that connector, we got to conclusion we got to a conclusion that we can also be being compatible with CM4 IO. As with as with compatibility, we will get a bigger range already existing CMIO base ports. So our first board was SDRAM and on V002 we managed to squeeze two buttons and four LEDs. Additional to ULXPS, ULX4M will all offer usage of server spin and LPCSI and DSI. On DDR3 prototype we managed to add one more button and other four more LEDs, as they are so, so important in the bucket. Also, this version adds two deep switches, and most important, we have added two, we have added USB connectors, so we can use this board even without base board. For that purpose, we will just need to use the USB bootloader, as USB pins are connected directly to the FPGA. DDR3 board also has a place for the one gigabit Ethernet chip. Everything is connected, but we are currently unable to find that chip, so we will need to redesign or wait a bit longer until the chip becomes available. In the way, next revision and now version of the board, we also have everything that DDR3 board now has. UX4M is now 6 level. There are three signal waves, two ground planes, and one power play wave. As, as I already mentioned, board are fully open, and you can check design at the intergalactic video. As for compatibility, for the moment we have released the first version of the board. We are getting and buying a lot of already designed IO boards and fixing compatibility issues if they arise. The latest thing we have received is this awesome open hardware tablet that usually holds Raspberry CM4 model, but it can also fit ULX 4M. Currently, we still do not have any sample of driving BP screen, but hopefully, at some, at some point, we will manage to get something on the screen. So, we will give a shout out. This Cutie Pie is from Taiwan. There is a person who is working in Pank. 然后后来现在人在那个 QT 就是做GY的那个 QT 的 QT 他们那他自己本身很喜欢业余时间喜欢打造这些 這個在克羅埃西亞的就是講者然後克羅埃西亞講者地址超短的我跟潘克兩個來看一下覺得這會不會他給錯然後克羅埃西亞然後那位講者就是這位高人然後克羅埃西亞說哦沒有啦我們這
他从那个 GDI 打出来这样。You can follow up Radiona or Interactive Key on the Twitter, and yes, you can send an email on work at intergalactic.eu. And thank you. 好，基本上就是。这位讲者是一个很有，我发现因为就最后一场，让我稍微打晒一下。这位是我，其实我还在念大学吧，大四那年的时候，他们做，他有他讲，他是克罗埃西亚的首府的那个叫萨格列布大学。那他们其实是一个有点类似像算社团这一类的感觉，就是一群其实。因为其实不像台湾人，其实这种就是很很多你十八岁上个大学这件事情其实很稀松平常。可是，其实很多国家其实他们上大学这件事情其实非常非常耗费、所费不赀的。他可能要去外面工作几年，为了念书。对，所以他们其实这些虽然讲说是学生社团，可是年纪都不见得比我们就是十八岁，然后有些可能三十几岁我去念大学这样。对，那他们在念大学的时候就觉得，因为像台湾这种你可以很轻易的说上网，然后什么易贝，然后 PJ 就买过来，这其实是很。在国外，尤其是东欧国家，看起来就觉得很莫名其妙的事。在东欧国家，他们那个其实你，就像最近就就在打仗了嘛，就是那其实是一个，就是其实资源不丰，他们就会想说，那我要自己能不能自己做个 A P P 开发版？然后，而且他们也不见得有经费可以去买 s i l e n x 的。那个时候，塞那个年代 s i l e n x 还没有 Webpack， 那个年代 s i l e n x 啊，然后 o t e r a 这种都是要。配的那个 EDA 拖圈，所以他们找了一些 Open Source EDA 拖圈，然后自己去勒 PCB 版，然后最后做一张 A P P 开发版出来。然后那时候我还在念大学，我写信跟他讲说：“哎、欸，我觉得好有趣，我想要玩一张。”然后那时候，那时候还没有，那时候 PayPal 好像很他他他的国家很麻烦。然后最后我还是去银行去办那个 Wire Transfer， 去把钱给他，就连 PayPal 他都不见得能够收。那我们就捐捐几百块，把那张板子搞过来之后，然后就开始就也是学，就是因为那时候其实念大学念书的电路，然后就就开始在玩一些那种，那个时候还没有 risk， 那时候叫 open risk， 就是另外一种 architecture， 一个很小的 risk， 呃，那其实白算盘有个 DEX 的架构，然后拿去改的叫 open risk 这样，然后那时候开始玩说啊 ，Linux 可以布起来，然后可以 porting 这样棒棒这样 ，anyway， 然后后来就他到现在是出到第四代，他刚刚讲他从 U X 二 S， 然后三 S， 然后现在四 M。就他其实做到第四代的 A P P 版，然后也是认识很久的老朋友，所以他刚刚讲说，他后来他刚刚就讲一讲说，嗯，我觉得你要挪我时间可以啦，可是我实在后面有事情了，不然我送个音，我说 video 丢给你，你自己播这样，所以就变成这样了。这、就是最后，因为刚刚那位你也刚各位在这在座都知道，那个日本讲者那一段那个实在变动太大，就超出了那个常态的 range， 就变成这样了，对，所以。蛮有趣的，我就觉得，呃，我最后就做个，就这个 track 最后的总结，就是我们虽然说我自己本身也是一间 C P Y P 公司，但其实在业余时间也好，就业时间也好，其实都有很多这种 open hardware 的 track 跟 community， 在台湾可能没有那么红，那就是在国外其实蛮多的。那也就是如果你想玩 open source 的，不管 E D A 是给 P G 还是给 A C C， 今天都听到了。那甚至连 P C B 版它用 Key Cat， 它是在一个就是随时旁边可能都会爆发战争的国家，它去弄那个 P C B 版出来，为了他们自己的。就是学习跟就是玩，就讲玩乐也是一部分，然后做这样的东西。其实我觉得台湾人要玩这个也很简，也不难。对，那很感谢各位今天陪伴我们这个学到最后，小弟二十一鞠躬，谢谢谢谢。好、哦，感谢感谢，我那我就把直播也切了。<笑>三一跟那个又五吧，就是我们有两颗这样，真的不好意思，大哥，那个这麻烦真的，我真的。哦，是是是，别别别别别别别，对对对对对，对我这的这些的确有考虑要那个下线啊，还是这方面放心，对，放心放心，谢谢谢谢。不不，我们说其实，好吧，就是现在都已经直播起掉了，就其实公公司已经做了一年，离开做梦时间有点远了，所以说我们都等过台湾录音。有有有，对对对，有少，对，没错，对，我也这样觉得。对，就是其实我反正反正今天大家都是好玩的，就是 Rivos 那边应该会有，因为呃 R I V O S 
，就是其实我们自己在外面都有个开玩笑，讲到说 all the cool kids， all all、uh, sorry， all the cool kids are at sci-fi， 呃、uh, ， at rebel style，、uh-huh. 就是其实我们那边其实在这一两年是有一些当年超创，就是那种很一人第十人，就是从是是是牺牲收获到他 T O 全部全部都全部都一个一手包一手包那种大神，现在都在 rebel style， OK， 就是因为。就这边其实就是开始要就普通普通复刻，原本原要要是没有打那场战争，其实考不到年底就要打 PO 了。是是。然后现在打完，现在自从要要 PO 个 P， 对啊，对，所以说其实他们为了要开始冲这些 revenue， 其实就很多那种比较排名的就开始开始变变少。是。对，那可是就我觉得看人的选择啊，我个人是觉得就是，我我今年三十几，我想要好好过生活，没有想要再去 r e v o l u 再闯荡一次。对，尤尤其是有一些那种比较年轻的，我我现在没有很大的，就是就是跟那种二十几岁可能就觉得啊，因为感觉就如果是玩一玩好了，然后我们这种就会觉得，对对对，是是。所以 r e v o l u 的话是是怎么拼啊？呃 ，R I V O S， 他们在台湾其实有招人，然后 Power Software 都有了，只是他们现在这种就是很就是很 Stealth Mode 的那种情况，其实都是呃，不见得会。真的有 open position 给你看，就是说你就写信过去跟他讲说，就是哦我很想要加入你们公司，他们就会回一封信说，那我们来台湾不知道哪个咖啡厅喝个咖啡，对对对，大家聊一下，对对对对对对对。像 s a f a r 这种已经是有点比较就是正规化，就是 HR 啦，然后会计啊什么，就用我们，算反正大家就现在这种，你们成长的好快啊，对，对，真的成长很快，可是他现在已经变得很官僚，就是我九月要去外面讲，就是我九月其实要去读柏林讲那个我们公司的一些。算就是考学入学啦，因为我们也是虽然讲说是开始不太做工，可是还是会有些东西是想要去 steal 这种 open， 因为有些东西你们是架构性的，今天 so open source 的那些 framework 一旦定性了，后面要动它很难动，是是，所以我们会尽量去想哦，但我们也不是不是恶意，可是就是有些东西 design 上它有 choice， 那我们会想要去 sway 这种，就是说，比如说像我是在说可能这一段，就可能我现在看你怎么希望这样做，要去 promote 我们的做法，是是，对，那机票钱。然后老外就说：“你这个不能不求参加就好吗？<笑>你一定要 in flight 吗？”<笑>我就想说：“你们 COVID 都结束了，了我们不能，对啊，为什么我不能坐飞机？”<笑>然后他就想说：“好了，我们再帮你争取一下。”我现在想，我靠，人家也是要要要要,要 IPO 了，然后就开始开始在确确认这些东西东看西看的，妈的！<笑>不过我是觉得其实。因为好了，我觉得老实说，我其实学历不好，我是教大家念到一半，硕班就退学的那种。哦、因为我玩这种东西玩太玩太凶了，就是玩到老板就觉得，你真的有要念硕班吗？你这个还是去外面闯荡好了。然后就，对我后来后来就自主退学了。然后其实后来也是闯荡很久啊，就是一些，稍微稍微我看一下我的退学，有一些那种其实像四大 IT 公司就不用讲，自己不去，就是我我是要去缅缅甸巴菲特，巴菲特说。就可能一六哦，这个助攻而且要签到，算了算了，对，然后然后算了，后来就在小公司打转，比如像金星也是一间很照顾我的公司，是是是，对，就后来就就反正人总是有很多换来换去的地方，对，请<笑>问是呃学生吗？还是是哦，各位各位人士哦，学学。有位的，分位的 ，OK 了解。哎、欸，我们还是你是做一爹，你做一爹，要不然是就三三三遇三家的。<笑>没有，就新创的。哦，新创，新创做一爹 ，Max 一爹。哦，这么新。然后我我我我开始是在录制啊，我在新华章，然后后来我到台湾。哦哦，新华章我知道那个。了解了解。那我好奇，我想问一下，就是我看到是你们。FPGA 版都是自己做，那那个 PC 版的话，你们是有软体自可以自己画这样子，画自己的呀？哎、欸，你是说 PC 版要怎么画吗？对 ，PC 版是有软体，有有有 TK， 呃 KICAD。对，就那个也算 EDA 还是什么？它是一种就 PCB 的 EDA 吧，是那个、oh, 那个跟就是我我现在的 PCB EDA 跟 HCEDA 就是不太一样，一樣差一樣差差蛮远的，对不对？哎<笑>、欸，所以说教授您也是做这种？对对,對，我我就有有玩玩了，然后最近最近有有想要碰一下这方面的东西。了解了解了解，我我只是兼任而已的，我自己本身还在中影院。哦、oh.。对对对。了解了解，那那也是老，那我们原本 cost card 其实更重要是、啊。对啊，没错，对对，我在 cost card 的还蛮蛮多人，对，像像之前总招小 B 跟我还算熟，对对对，老老朋友了，老朋友了，对对对。好
，我我可能还要再收一下，那就不打扰了。没问题，没问题，谢谢谢谢谢谢。我可以跟你交换。哦，好，没问题，好的，没问题，没问题。呃 ，LinkedIn 的部分，我应该要怎么跟你交换会比较好？我可能说。呃，您我我直接开 LinkedIn 好了，然后打您的 ID 这样。不过我 LinkedIn 上的资讯邮件就没有更新了。我最近因为这最近这这这几个月其实真的太忙。好事，微信度，这位吗？对对对。好，没问题，没问题。我就发了我们，就是把所有东西把它抖起来。OK OK OK OK， 谢谢。OK， 我就是这个。OK， 好好好 ，OK 好。呃，你的我们的这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，我们现在这个，好的，没问题，那就不多打扰，不多打扰。谢谢谢谢。以后以后那个我们班有 email 就多联络多联络。好，没问题，谢谢。有有一些问题的话再请教。其实我抱歉，可能就当我多嘴问一下好了。我要好奇说，就是您会想要承接这样的一个缺课吗？<笑>呃，不会。<笑>我了解了，我了解您的，我相信您懂了，对对对。对，也是因为其实真的是做起来有点。你现在弄到第二第二季，我是觉得有点累的，因为我在想说台湾不知道有没有比较有兴趣。你说你说整个这样子的，对吧、啊？这个去筹办这样的一个活动，就是应该说这个轨道啦，就是大活动一定是附附在那个，就是他们 Costco 底下。对对对对对。不过 Costco 大家比较会参与的主题是。比较 special， 我们这种都是异类，对，你就光看今天的人数就知道了。对，所以我觉得，我其实我其实蛮讶异的，所以说今年怎么会怎么会这么多？台湾硬体王国中，对，然后其实呃，其实这部分我当然教授那边可能有更更好的康复，不过我听我听到的版本是说，像 EDA 这种，其实他们因为很多产学说，就是 NDA 签的非常的严格，但是严格到说会是了解，就是可能。就是比如说，你甚至不能出来讲说你遇到什么问题，就是他他们的我听到的讲法是，就是他们跟我讲说，就是有些一些公司会觉得，这你知道这问题的点在哪里，就就其实后面就大家知道是你在大概遇到什么问题了，对对对，就是那种反而不会那么 open open 的让他希望让大家跟大家分享说我做了些什么事，对，就是那个敏感度很很高，太高了，太高了。所以其实我觉得可能，欸、其实好奇就是老师您主要做的领域是？我是要做的东西跟演算法比较关系。演算法哦，是该不是毕业演算法那边的？没有没有没有没有。Go play 之类的。没有没有。Go for lucky。做布局电路。对，所以所以是实际上想要兜一下这个 Respire 的处理器，然后甚至于把一些不要说是东西加上去。了解了解。搭个小系统，那我实际上有有稍微看过一些，所以才会说我知道 free license 有一三三一零 ，M 一三一零啊，然后对大概如果您但但是那个已经，我觉得那个我记得你们应该是一二四系列是跟 Cortex 的货比较接近，嗯、对对对，三一零已经比一二四还要再再大一再大再大嘛，对。如果您是要真的很小扩的，蛮其实全东家那边有。就是 N D 四有 N D 四有 N 二跟二五，二五二五二五可能二五其实已经是那种 M P U 等级了，是是，对，那二二应该是您要的 class， 然后呃，如果您要买 Respire 的货的话，中国那边我不排斥，嗯，那有一间叫那个新来 Nucle N U C L E I Nucle 新来科技，然后。当然，您说平头哥那是顶啊，平头哥也是有做这种 embedded code 的。可是如果是 open source 的话，我可能先用 open source。open source 的话，我我个人很推一颗，我我不知道您有没有兴趣叫呃，您去查，就这个数字有点长，有点长，您可能真的需要用机器啊，就 CV 三二 CV 三二。一四零 P， 呃 ，A B C D 的一四零 P， 哎，您、欸、知道这一颗？我知道这一颗。对，这这一颗是真的有拿去 tape out， 然后有 production 的。它有一有呃有一间，我记得是法国公司叫 Green Waves， 
然后他有拿去做 t a k e o f 而且他有他自己特殊的 DSP 的 extension。是,是，然后而且他们主打是低功耗的，就是如果您是有这种就是需求，我觉得应该是非常非常适合。有我我我我听过这个，嗯，我有听过，所以所以你也推这一个、啊，我非常推那一个。如果您是学术要用，然后而且甚至未来可能要商转的话，我觉得这科应该是蛮适合的。好，好好好。那他们一呃 CV 三个是一个 family， 就是他们还有 CV 三一四零 S 吧，要做那个 security extension 的，然后跟 CV 三一四零 X， 他们预计要拿去做。就是 co processor 的 interface 来去接其他的 module， 对我觉得其实 C P 三二一整个系列是一个还蛮，虽然我我自己本身是做 C P 三二一 co processor， 可是我觉得蛮蛮蛮佩服他们。是，对，就是一一 C P 三二这一系列。这一系列，对。好的。哎，所以您有在跑欧陆的研讨会吗？因为其实他们就是这一挂的在。Boston, 其,實其实我八月十号出国，九月到欧洲。哦、oh. ，对，我所以我，我九月九月的会议跟跟这些比较没关系，没关系。其实他们几个就是那个 ETH 的柱子，那个叫 Luca Binini 嘛，我有点忘记，反正就他们那几位，就是当初 C P 三一四零 P 的前身叫 Risky R I S， 对，他们几位都非常非常健谈。然后其实我之前还在。前公司的时候，那时候因为玩 Vector， 然后玩一玩玩一玩，就觉得说想要看看 Open Source Core 的效能。然后那时候他们讲说他们的 Vector Extension Core 要 Open Source， 可是玩了大概半年一年还没有给 Core。是。然后我就写说啊，我很有兴趣，想要做一下 Venture Marketing， 不知道你们 Core 先给我。是是是。然后就把 Core 寄过来，然后还说就是哦，我们很很好奇说就是 Commercial 的 Vector Core 的 Provider 怎么看这些事。然后后来就跟他聊一下，其实。因为我觉得其实他们这些欧陆人对这种事情其实还蛮 open 的，不像台湾，其实你很多人会，我我不是不是、那個、對,对对，台湾的确是会东藏一点<笑>西藏一点，或者这个不能讲那个不能讲，啊会讲说哦我这个可能有跟哪东西有合作，對對對對對其实这个样子，对对对对对。那就我真的好可能要真的撤了，好，没问题，谢谢谢谢谢谢。謝謝謝謝谢谢谢谢，我想我想，我是做手绘的，就是自己有在玩这种东西，我就是这种东西。对，啊，那我我之前有做，其实我之前觉得那个克罗埃西还挺，克罗埃西，因为我因为我其实想要买那个黑板，然后就是在学，然后玩，然后后来就是应该说那时候还没有用，用掉嘛，然后他他后来跟我说，我现在没有用。嗯，因为那个时候是目前做的是 PMP 的 CS， 嗯，然后就没有传这样，后来后来就告诉我说什么，如果有机会再联络这样，然后反正我后来就是，后来是接触的是三云，哦，那个我是想问说，就是说三云它它的那些产品，它那些晶片就是有一个 slice 的一个产品，就是说，有多比赛，就是让我让我不要知道说这个，因为它它里面的基底多大，然后那个配合几个。嗯，那可是他那那张一五，然后他们我不知道那个，嗯、但是我不知道他们的，我听到听说他那个，我懂我懂我懂，我我怎么听过的那个，就是我我东西到底合不合得上去的一些，欸、就是他有没有这个产品？呃、欸，其实不太多，可以问一下那个 slide 的话，会会会再给你，会再给你。对，反正有有零点，好，有在就应该说，我我我们应该会在会后大概可能。最晚一个月了，我们尽量把时代都放到那个 c o s t c a r 的官网。请、嗯、您等得到的时候吗？可以，可以。好，可能那就大概一个月后在 c o s t c a r 官网就找得到。哦，在官网上面，不是在 h a c m d 不是。他什么？不是在 h a c m d 里面，不是。呃， h a c k 也可以，我们应该说我们，我们这边就会反正统一把它，就是就就全部丢给就是大会啊，大会要放在哪里，其实我是不是很确定。哦。h a c m d 有可能，就我我已经有点久没有。很久那一段，对，我应该会就反而会在会到时候会，要么是那个，要么是那个他，最后个，对吧？对，我是那个，对，我这边结束了，对对对。好，谢谢哦。谢谢。没问题，那就哦哦哦哦，没事没事没事，好。OK， 拜拜。